Rich Porter, born July 26, 1965 in Harlem, New York. He was his mother's oldest child. With his parents being separated, Rich wanted to be the man of the house. At an early age, Rich would sell newspapers and bag groceries to make cash. Rich grew up at a time when black men was getting rich in Harlem dealing heroin. Guys such as Nicky Barnes, Frank Lucas, Guy Fisher, among others. Uptown was the place to be. Filled with nice cars, pretty women, and a whole lot of money. Rich's mother, Velma Porter, was from the streets as well. They say she was strict. They say she didn't hesitate to whoop Rich ass. Even as a child, a young Rich Porter wanted to get fly. One time, him and his friends went to a clothing store to steal. basically they would get and they had a tendency to take you shopping but they were stealing and one day we got the courage to hang out with them i i gas rich up your rich let's go man forget this mom's is shitting on you my mom's shitting on me tying them coming to school with new coats on so we go up to the bronx uh, alexander on the grand concourse now alexander's for the black folks was macy's uh, Gimbal, Lord and Taylor, that was all for us. We fuck Lord and Taylor, forget all those. If you could make it to Alexander, they had everything you wanted. And we did, and we made it up there. Tyrone, myself, Brent, and Richard Porter. We up there, we go in, we're gonna make our move. We thought we had it down pat. Ty Ty made it out, made it out once. Then we come, he comes out, show us, yo, it's easy, come on in. We go, boom. Apparently the security guard watched him make it out and come back in, brought the troops, here we come. We putting on coats, walking around the store, we good, and uh, get halfway out the door, and we hear, you little motherfuckers, what the fuck you doing? And here's Rich caught in the corner, he got him in the corner, he's grabbing Brent with one, and eventually another guard came, took us all in. So now, we all in the background, and uh, we in the back, they, now the deal comes this, whose mother are we gonna call? Brent's father, out of the question. Papa Jay gonna come in and tan everybody up. My mother, hell to the no. I'd rather them sent me to Spofford. Ty Ty had had so many priors, he could not call mother, grandmother, sister, nobody. Last hope, Richard Porter. Call Mama Do. call Miss Porter. Cause Miss Porter, granted, was hip. She was slick. She came from the street. We knew Miss Porter was ride or die. You know, ride or die. She cool, hat cocked to the side, slick talking moms. So we like, come on. He, we gas. Go, oh, Rich, call. Sure enough, here comes Del. What's, what's happening, Doja? She come in talking shit. We like, yeah, we good. She said, all right, Richard, come on. Let's go get your ass on out of here. We like, hold on, Del. You can't leave us here, Miss Del. Come on, Miss Porter. She said, uh uh. Well, all right. You know what, security? Let all them little niggas come on with me. So as soon as we get outside, must bridge step pop some. They jump out the car with the belt. We like, yo, what the fuck? She said, y'all, get your ass in on the highway, the bus. I don't care how you getting home, you're out of here. But Rich, you walk it, you walk it, walk it, you walk. Wear Rich ass out. I mean, wore him out. Now, granted, we on the sideline crying. Yo, I said niggas still getting the whooping. And uh, we didn't let Rich live that down for the longest. Velma brother Johnny Porter was a street hustler in the late 60s, early 70s. They call him Apple. 
Apple grew up with people like Nicky Barnes and the infamous Preacher. Some say that Apple taught Rich a lot about the streets. A young Rich looked up to his uncle. A young Rich Porter started dealing weed. The weed money helped Rich get a little fly. He copped gear, sneakers, and silver chains. But that wasn't enough for a young Rich Porter. Rich hooked up with an older cat in the neighborhood by the name of Allison. Allison taught Rich a new way to get money. They teamed up and sold fake hash. You see, Rich and his family used to live on 146th Street in Garvin. And I lived on 146th in St. Nicholas. Rich used to hang out with the older cats up on Amsterdam Avenue. And I stayed down here with the, the cats that we grew up between St. Nicholas and Garvin. And um, Rich was, 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 was hustling man, at a young age, man. Uh, the first thing I knew that he was doing, to my knowledge, was selling sage and eggs, you know, fake hash to the white boys and shit. Hey, man, this is Matt Ellison. I remember when he first started out saying they used to be on 47th Street, 14th. They used to run around selling sage and eggs together, you know what I mean? L.A. was the first young nigga in Harlem to get money. They say he was fly, he had all the young ladies, and he was selling that age. They say that L.A. learned the game from his older brother. Nicky Barnes and them left behind a lot of money in Harlem. And L.A. knew that. They say my man used to ride his dirt bike up and down the street. Rich in L.A. had the hood locked with the heroin. They were only 16, 17 years old, making a lot of money. This is 81 or 82 we talking about. 
The rooftop was LA's favorite hangout spot. They said he was a good skater. Him and Rich had all the young ladies on them. They was making real money. L.A. in the sob. Rich followed right behind him in the black BMW. Out the few young dudes that was on the corner. Gotcha. Sitting on a foreign car. Now. What kind of foreign? Uh, a BMW mm. at the time. German. Now, mm -hmm. yeah, German for sure. Mm -hmm. Now, let me give people some insight or whatever the case may be. For people that don't understand this time frame, the minimum wage was $3.35 an hour. Mm. Okay, so now that we got that out the way, mm -hmm. the kid that I'm talking about sitting on a foreign car, and he ain't no more than about three years older than me, max. And I'm 11 wow. going on 12, 12 at the most. And when I see it, back, you know, back in the days in Harlem, you couldn't be sitting on nobody's foreign car and be a kid. They whip your ass. Mm -hmm. You know, parents with other uh, for other parents, it's just how it was back then. Each mm -hmm. one teach one. It take a village to, you know, to, to raise a child. So, facts. When I seen him, you know, I'm 11 years old. I said, "Ooh, you better get off that man car before he hurts you, man." You know, you don't want to ass whoop. Mm -hmm. He said, "Shorty, what you talking about?" Mm. I said, "That's a BMW. You don't want to get caught, you know, on nobody's car." Mm -hmm. He looked at me and laughed. And when I turned around, he was standing on it. Mm. When you say standing on it, like on, on the hood? He was literally standing on, on, the, on, the, on the hood of the car. Wow. Like it was nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And I said, oh, I'm 11 years old. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, that man going to get you, man. I ain't messing with y'all. And mm. I go in the store to get my little dollar hero. Mm. I come out eating my hero. I'm about to walk back mm -hmm. down the block. I turn, and this man is in the car. You know, this, this guy's in mm -hmm. the car. With the, with the, uh, 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 with the, with the ignition turned on. Now I'm sitting there stuck. My mouth is wide open. I know he can't be no older than 14, 15 at the most. Mm. In a car that costs at least thirty thousand dollars back when minimum wage was three dollars and thirty five cent. Mm. He said, "Uh, can I drive the car now?" He said, "Can I be in the car now?" <laughs> and I just started, you know, I just was sitting there looking. Him and his man thought it was the most hilarious thing in the world. From then on. Mm -hmm. I needed to be on that corner. Mm. You understand? I kept trying. I kept trying. They wouldn't let me be on the corner. Now, but before you go on, who was that? That was Rich Porter. That was Richard Porter. In 1983, AZ was ready to get in the game, inspired by Rich in L.A. Making only $75 a week working at the cleaners. AZ was ready to make some real money. After watching the movie Scarface, AZ made up his mind. He was going to join Rich in L.A. AZ meets a Dominican delivering clothes at the pool hall. The Dominican name was Nunu. Nunu was a kingpin. He sold pure cocaine. Some say it was some of the best cocaine in New York City. So A opened a coke spot. The product he was getting from Nunu had him booming. He started making more money than L.A. and Rich. 
A bought his first Benz. Rich in LA didn't understand how A got the money so quickly. They didn't know at the time that coke money come faster than heroin money. And the coke A was slanging had people coming all day. LA and Rich was ready to switch hustles. They started moving the same coke A was moving and started making way more money. A went to New New and got them a brick. They set up shop on 144th Street and 7th Avenue. A, Rich, and L.A. became ghetto stars. A lot of people didn't understand how them kids was making so much money. Around this time, on the east side of Harlem, a kid named Apo was ready to get a piece of the pie. Apo was a stick-up kid slash hustler. Alpo envy rich in LA. Some people say rich in LA was the reason Poe started riding dirt bikes. Poe wasn't making real money at that time. But that would soon change. By 1984, AZ, Rich, and LA was deep in the game. They continued buying cars. Rich fell in love with the Coke game. He never seen that much money before. The cash was coming fast. LA and Rich ran multiple coke spots. They paid young hustlers to work those spots. Rich and LA became famous in Harlem. Everyone was talking about them. They never seen brothers that young with so much money. And that kind of street money bring violence. People started hating on Rich in LA. It was time to get strapped up. They had to protect their investments and reputations. One day, a guy by the name of Roz breaks in LA mother's house, searching for money and drugs. It was time for LA and Rich to put in some work. They catch Roz outside of an Italian restaurant. They shoot Roz over 10 times, but Roz survives. The rooftop was LA's favorite hangout spot. 
Rich didn't like to hang out there much. He felt the hate in the air. All the young females wanted Rich in LA. And all the young females hung out at the rooftop. Rich knew that him and L.A. were sitting targets at the rooftop. He warned L.A. to stop going several times. But a young, cocky L.A. didn't listen. L.A. was shot outside the rooftop and later died at the hospital. I remember it and I got a phone call and the phone call was so devastating because this is not the first time this is something that happened to me in particular so I just screamed and I just LA's funeral was packed old and young people came to pay their respects After L.A.'s death, Rich no longer had a partner. He took over L.A. Coke spots and started making way more money. Some people even accused Rich of killing L.A. to take over his spots. But that was a lie. They were both worth about 100000 at the time. And now Rich was in another tax bracket. Rich was only 19 years old, dealing with a lot of money. After the Ross incident with L.A., people continued to test Rich. Rich wasn't afraid to bust his gun. Two months after L.A. was killed, two guys tried to rob Rich at his girlfriend's house. One of the robbers didn't make it out alive. Rich Porter wasn't no sucker. The violence eventually led Rich to prison. R.P. Indy and Jealous had, Jealousy had struck through Harlem. Uh, he was a young kid emerged from really nowhere. Um, hadn't, if we would say, uh, paid his dues in the streets. Hadn't been to jail for nothing. Had just become successful. And um, we're, it was a place on 109th Street, 109th between Columbus and Amsterdam. Nice little spot to get your car washed. Nobody in the neighborhood, there ain't no girls there. And with it, I had, I had a black Cherokee Jeep, customized, rims on it and lambskins. And Rich had a Wagoneer, a nice sound system. I think he had, was putting some rims on it, not sure. But anyway, we're there, getting our car washed, listening to music, having a good time, just enjoying life as it is, as a teenager could. Uh, and we leave from the car wash, make a left on 9th, go to 108th Street. As we come down 108th Street, 
The rich is, I, my, my sound system is on. I'm already silicone tires, long before armor wall, they're doing silicone. And the silicone's pumping. System is on. Uh, never forget, I was listening to a big mouth, a big mouth. You got a big mouth. And Rich was like, yo, you heard that new joint? Oh, uh, you know, as you know, we listen to the music, so, you know, we finished getting the cars washed or whatever, whatever. You know, we get ready to come back uptown. We go up, you know, bust the left 108th to come back uptown. The shooter's already in place. He's in position. Um, he's lined my man up. I look, and I'm looking at him, and I'm thinking Rich sees him, but he doesn't. And at that point, I'm continuously blowing my horn. Beep, 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 telling Rich, like, go, 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 go. Um, and by the time Rich looks in his mirror and sees me, the gunner's coming off the curve now. And as he's coming off the curve, they run up off the corner shooting at us and shooting at Rich and shit. Rich is in the Jeep in front of me. I'm in the Jeep in back of Rich. So they shooting at Rich in the Jeep. Uh, one plus one equal two. Rich knew what to do. Get the fuck out of there. Um, and at that point, he took off. Um, and he's trying to gather, I guess, he had his, you know, had his Roscoe with him, so he's trying to get his Roscoe. But does he stand there? What does he do? He's a little discombobulated with kids. He don't know at this point. Uh, and it, as fate would have it. Like, but before anybody could act, the, the police was already on the scene. The beat walker was like down the block. So I'm trying to run money over who's shooting. But the police is coming, so now it's like a thing where, do I get out of here or do I? He's running, he's driving down the block trying to get away and trying to get his Roscoe at the same time. A plane, uh, a foot cop is walking down Columbus and sees and hears the shooting and begins chasing Richard. Not the gunman, chase Rich on feet. Uh, Rich, of course, driving, couldn't get away because of traffic. So, I mean, they caught Rich, so it was too late. I had to get up out of there. And dudes ran through Morningside Park and got away. A 19-year-old Rich Porter had to serve a year on Rikers Island. It was Rich's first time doing time. He was charged for the shooting, and he was wearing a bulletproof vest. Rich constantly got visits from his girlfriend and sister. A young Rich Porter couldn't wait to come home and get back to business. Rich even met a new connect in prison and made plans for the future. Time was flying by. A was on the streets holding it down, still making money. Rich sent some of his friends to get work from A. And one of them friends was Poe. Rich was finally released from prison. And he was ready to get back to work.
Enterprising dealers went further, developing a form of cocaine that was even cheaper and packed a lot more punch. This is it. The drug so powerful it will empty the money from your pockets, make you sell the watch off your wrist, the clothes off your back. Or kill your mother. Yep, that's what we're seeing. On the streets of New York, it's called crack, and the deals go down quickly. You've just witnessed a buy. This form of cocaine comes concentrated. It is smoked rather than sniffed. It produces an intense high within five to 10 seconds that lasts only five to 10 minutes and leaves the user craving for more. By 87, Rich was selling crack. He started making way more money. He ran several crack spots and sold weight to certain hustlers. People thought Rich was a millionaire. With all the cars, his home in New Jersey, his condos. He was sure living a millionaire lifestyle. Around this time, Rich and Alpo became good friends. Rooftop. This one rooftop was real popular, like '85. Again, me and me and me and me and Rich's relationship became real strong, man. We. Around this time, A was robbed and shot nine times. He was ready to lead the game. Rich was ready to go to war. And the dude, Kevin, used to go with AZ's sister. That was her boyfriend. So he came home, AZ looked out for him, was giving him work, letting him bottle up, paying him two, three thousand dollars just sitting at a damn table. And the other two dudes was his boys. So if A wanted to go to war with them niggas, he couldn't. How you gonna go to war with somebody he don't know? Only one he would have known was Kevin. Only way we could have made that happen is we, if we would have got Kevin. We, me, Rich Porter, me, Rich Porter, my brother Keith Caesar, he's locked up now in North Carolina doing life for a murder right now, trying to get him out of jail. And and two other cats. Alpo seen the dude, Kevin. Alpo told the nigga, yo, A shot up. I mean, uh, A got shot up, my nigga. Yo, come to the block. Alpo was really trying to lure him to where we is at. He never came. So, we all get together on the block. I get with, with Rich. Rich, me and my boy Keith sees the one that was supposed to take was going to go with me to the house that night. I was supposed to be in that house. My boy Rick, which is Kato's brother, if it wasn't for him, A would have been dead. Um, He would have died in that house. Rick and my boy, his name is Kate, um, Calio. They went up to the house in the Bronx. A said, damn, I forgot to get bottles. Gave them money. Calio and my boy Rick to go get bottles. The girl that the dumb King Erna nigga talking about the young girl. She jumped out the cab and he was like, what? What's going on? She was, you know, I don't want to say stalking, but in love with him. And, you know, he wasn't really paying her no attention like that. But she knew about the little hideaway house. He didn't even know she was coming. And seeing her was like, oh, all right, come on, God damn. So that's how she was there. So he gets there. Normally they say, Joanne. Joanne look out the window, what's going on? Curse you out first. She was the older lady, cool lady. Curse you out and then throw the key down for you to come up. He was yelling, Joanne, the key just come flying out the window. He didn't never see her. He was like, man, she probably drunk, come on, man. They go in, send my boy and them to get bottles. Get upstairs, door open, putting guns on them. Him, her, my boy Charlie C. Charlie C. got killed. The the, the uh, 
Joanne, other two friends. The girl didn't get killed because she was running around the room like, get off me, wouldn't. So they hit her in the head right. A was like, they kept telling him, open the safe. The Kevin nigga told him, there's a lot of money in that house. And that's why they did that job. And the job was to kill everybody because they know Kevin. So, they, like the King Ernie nigga saying once again, with the AC was soft, they ain't need no guns and all that to do all that. They did because Kevin, um, ain't no Kevin. So, if that shit would have happened, after that's gonna be a problem. Because at that time, Alpo, Rich Porter, and Gang Salute, myself, all my team, all my niggas would have jumped off the building for AZ at this time. He was still that nigga. So it was no he soft and all that shit ever. So anyway, I went and seen my fucking nigga in the hospital. His head was swole like a watermelon. After the operation with the incision, you can see where they did it around the middle part of his head. Where they sewed his head back up. That shit kind of fucked me up. So, like I said, me, Rich Porter, a few of my friends. Rich Porter, you know, when the Kevin... I mean, when Kevin ain't never come around, we went to his house and was waiting for him. Rich Porter called us down there. He gave everybody two of them toys, two toys apiece, and we was waiting for him to come. Sitting across the street in this park, waiting at his mom's house. He lived there. So, so let me explain to you how real Rich Porter is. He will have niggas tore up if you're fucking with him. He gonna have you tore up, sent out of here. Let me explain to you how real Rich Porter is. He will have niggas tore up if you're fucking with him. He gonna have you tore up, sent out of here. But he was a good dude, only if you fuck with him. But, get back to what I'm talking about. While we sitting over there waiting, Alpo will pull up. You ain't see him yet? Nah, he will drive off, go back to the block, seeing if the nigga coming over there come back again y'all y'all he ain't come nope so one of the other guys was like yo man fuck that we gonna go upstairs and get his mom's fuck that this how real rich porter is no we're not doing that that lady ain't got nothing to do with none of this shit we're not doing that and a just confirmed to me because rich was like man we out man fuck that a just confirmed to me yesterday that he the one told Rich, man, leave that shit alone because they going to be on us and they going to come get at me. If any of that shit happened, just chill. A just told me that yesterday. Rich knew that A was cooperating with the cops. Rich Norpo came to visit A at the hospital due to the police involvement. Around this time, the gang was stressing a 24-year-old Rich Porter out. 
He felt like he didn't gone too far to turn back. Rich kept taking losses and that caused him to be more greedy. Rich was dealing with Fritz at this time. Fritz was frying Rich a lot of bricks. Around this time, Poe was in DC doing his thing. In DC, Poe made millions of dollars. Rich started cooking to work at his mom's crib and taking over blocks. He had his crew selling $5 crack bottles. Rich crew had the best deals on the market. When Rich crew was out, no other crews made money. Rich was bragging about his whip game back in the day. He called his crack butter. A advised Rich to let other people eat, but Rich didn't want to hear it. The streets is all I ever had. Never had a mama, never had a daddy, said Rich. Niggas gotta get it from the rough. I've been doing this shit since I was 13. I ain't got nobody else. Niggas mad I got that butter shit. When my crew out, no other crew eat, man. That's what Rich told A. Let me explain to you how real Rich Porter is. He will have niggas tore up if you fucking with him. He gonna have you tore up. Sent out of here. Preacher. Now, his situation with Rich was different. Preacher took care of some murders for Rich. Rich used Preacher and his crew as his muscle. Preacher crew took care of at least three murders for Rich. One was a guy named Sean Moe. Another one was Roz, LA's alleged killer. And the one that haunted Rich the most was his friend, little brother. Rich had his childhood friend, little brother killed because he was selling fake crack to customers. He was replacing Rich crack with pieces of soap. And that caused customers to go elsewhere. Money kept coming up short at that spot. Rich had enough. It was time to find out what was going on at the spot. He find out his childhood friend, little brother, who's running the spot, is smoking crack now. Rich tried to warn him, but he continued to sell customers fake crack. Rich even sent goons to beat him down, and that still didn't work. Instead of firing the guy, Rich went to talk to Preacher. Preacher crew took Rich friend, little brother out of here. Rich kept his involvement a secret for years. But whatever's done in the dark is seen in the light. Rich's friend found out what happened to his little brother. 
beef was heating up. Rich knew he had went too far this time. Said he wasn't a, he wasn't no angel though. I mean, his, his horns, his little horns stuck out his head sometimes too. Um. A lot of blood was on Rich hands. On December the 5th, 1989, Rich's little brother Donnell was kidnapped on the way to school. Rich was like a father to Donnell. He kept him fresh, gave him money and jewelry. Donnell looked up to his big brother. Donnell was a normal 12 year old kid that was into basketball. Rich's uncle Apple lived with Rich's mom. He seen all the money that was made, all the coke that was cooked up. Apple and Rich mom were both addicted to crack cocaine. Apple started hating on his nephew, Rich. So he went to talk to an old friend. Hey, we got Darnell. We got Darnell. Tell Rich we want five hundred thousand dollars, or we just gonna kill him. Simple as that. Tell Rich what we said. Rich rushes over to his mom's house, hoping it was all a joke. Rich come through the door and see his mother and sister in tears. All 24 year old Rich Porter could do was calm down his mother and sister and wait for the next call. Yo, I ain't giving you shit. Yo, where's my little brother? 
Yo, where's my little brother? Yo, fuck, you ain't even shit. Where's my little brother? Talking talk. Where's my little brother? Who are you, motherfucker? Where's my little brother? Who are you, motherfucker? Rich and the family didn't have any other choice but to wait for the next phone call. Yo, where the fuck is my brother? Listen to me. Go to the McDonald's on 125th. Look in the bathroom under the sink. We got something for you. An angry rich porter sent a few of his friends to the McDonald's to see what's up. They didn't find anything. Damn, this is no fucking joke. Did you go in the bathroom and look? He probably was scared to go in the bathroom and look. Did you go in the bathroom and look? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Fuck this. I'm calling the police. I'm calling the police. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not call the cops, man. Hold on. They might be watching us. We don't need them. They got Darnell. Let's stay calm here. Nephew, talk to me. Who do you think you can be? Got any idea? Do you owe anybody money? Hell no, I owe nobody no fucking money. I don't know who the fuck it could be. I'm gonna kill some fucking body. Rich, if you owe somebody some money, just pay him. They got your brother. Just pay him if you owe him money. Don't owe nobody no money. <phone rings> Take the call ID. Is it working? <phone rings> Now you see we ain't fucking around, right? Bring us that money. Yo, Playboy, we didn't see nothing, all right? There wasn't nothing in there. Well, motherfucker, you better go and look again. Come on, Peanut, let's go. Rich and his cousin Peanut go down to the McDonald's. Rich and Peanut return with Darnell's finger and a tape. They came to the house and they heard of Richard and they were discussing something and I didn't really know what it was at the time so I was like, what happened? Like I know they didn't send and what ended up, what they ended up telling me was that they had sent a copy of a tape and my little brother's finger with two of his rings. And on the tape, like, they brought the tape, they wouldn't bring it upstairs, I guess, because I had already stated that if that was so, I didn't want to see it, and I didn't want to know. But they brought the tape upstairs, and they played the tape, and on the tape, my little brother was, um, was crying. And he's, like, telling us that they cut his finger off. Oh, it helps. Oh, they cut my finger off. Rich, please. Pale, Rich. Pale. Pale, Rich, please. I love you, Mommy. I love you, Pat. I love you, Rich. Pat knew it's time to get the cops involved. And that made things hot for Rich. The people around Rich wonder why he didn't just pay the kidnappers. Rich was moving bricks. Not only that, he was getting them cheap. His cook-up game was strong. Out of each brick, he'd get an extra 500 grams. 
Rich had stuff on lock. Each of his spots had cheese lines all day, all night. Customers was getting almost a half a gram for five dollars. Not only that, Rich sold weight. A lot of weight. Everybody was like, damn, just pay the people, Rich. But Rich kept saying he ain't had a whole 500,000. A few friends even tried to help. Some people say Rich had the money, but he just wanted to make the money to get Darnell instead of going in his stash. Fritz give Rich 30 bricks to get Darnell back. Uncle Johnny thought that was a good deal. Days later, Uncle Johnny come to Rich with a letter. The letter say, he is still alive. We still want the money. He need to go to the hospital. He losing a lot of blood. We know the pigs involved. This is your last chance, Rich. Go to the payphone on the corner of 207th Street in Sherman and come along. We will call you at nine o'clock sharp. The kidnappers would have definitely took those 30 kilos that Fritz gave to Rich. That was Rich's last chance. While Uncle Johnny and Rich stand in the hallway and talk, FBI agents are inside waiting for the kidnappers to call back. Rich had two choices. He could either offer the kidnappers the 30 bricks that Fritz gave him or just go inside and give the letter to the FBI agents. Uncle Johnny tried to talk to him. Let's not get the cops involved. 
Let's don't go in there and tell them motherfuckers shit. All Rich had to do was go along with Apple's plan. Rich decided to get a letter to the agents and keep the 30 kilos for himself. Rich and the FBI agents waited at the payphone for over an hour. The kidnappers never called. For the next few weeks, the Porter family stressed about Darnell. They were hoping the kidnappers would let him come home for Christmas. But it wasn't a hood Christmas movie. Darnell never came home. Rich was stressed out. His baby brother was kidnapped for the money he was making in the street. Rich was on the edge. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Only thing I could remember on my end of it is remembering that he was, Rich was agitated. Mm -hmm. it, he was agitated a lot. He, you know, mm -hmm. he, he was kind of, of course, he was rushing a lot more for, for, for bread. And if, if the bread wasn't what he thought it was, he, you know, he was, he was agitated, man. And, you know, now, now that I know everything, I realized what it was. You know what I'm saying? I knew he had, I knew he had an issue because he never used to talk like that. Not to me anyway or whatever. But he was real agitated and trying to get this money. Now you, we know it was true. He was trying to get it for his brother. And Rich got back to work. Rich meet up with Poe to take care of some business. Poe pull up in a van. Rich hop in. Oh, got on some fridge, huh? 
Yeah, I already told you that. Oh, oh, I... They drive for miles with Rich slumped over in the front seat. They find a spot to dump Rich's body. Rich's body was immediately found. He was shot multiple times in the chest and head. Things became dark in Harlem. Rich's funeral was a week later. Killed Rich. Some people say he was jealous of Rich, and some say he did it for the bricks. Rich Porter influenced the whole hip hop culture. MC such as Jay-Z, LL Cool J, Nas, all rap about the legend. He written the Bible for the drug dealers in the ghetto. He put Harlem on the map. He made Harlem what it is.